the Nexus. Yeah. That was one of the greatest wrestling introductions, builds, runs. I don't care where you're from, what year you started watching, the Nexus will be forever remembered as a top 10, top 20 moment of, holy moly, this is nuts. Now, the day of, as you're talking about NXT the first season, you're underneath the impression you're going to live in a house with these wrestlers. And you're also competing for a spot. So you're friends, but not really, because you're all competing for that one spot that Wade Barrett ended up getting. And then you all got that spot. So what was the day like starting in the morning to your debut? What are you being told? What are you not being told? So nothing. We weren't being told anything. So we didn't really know what was going to happen. Uh, we're like, oh, is this over? Are we going to go back to Florida, go back to FCW, or what, what's the plan? But they flew us out to Miami, and uh, Vince called us into the office, and he's like, he's like, okay, this is what you guys are going to do. And, and we're all like, what? Because, I mean, wrestling is always recycled, right? It's always borrowed from the past or from other storylines. I mean, there's hardly ever any new things that pop up in wrestling, right? So as he was explaining this, we were like, none of us could envision that we were just like, oh, okay, this guy's kind of crazy, but whatever, <laughs> this just sounds cool. Let's do yeah. this. We didn't really understand or realize that it's going to turn out the way it did, and uh, <laughs> which I'm actually glad it did because like we, we kind of put, uh, I wouldn't say not much effort into it, but like, you know, like when you, when you have a new job and you're kind of walking on eggshells, you don't want to mess up. That was the first day. So it, it was just like, there's no way you can mess this up. Just literally mess up the ring in the arena. I'll pay for everything. It's like, if there's a security guard, like rip your tie or whatever, like we'll, I'll pay for it. And we're like, okay, cool. So uh, it, it, was, it was super fun. Yeah, the, the smashing of monitors, ripping up the ring apron. That, I think that's what's craziest too, because we've seen you know NWO or bad guys show up and, and like, oh, we're going to beat up the good guy. This was mm -hmm. beyond that. This right. was beyond that. This was attacking Justin Roberts, being choked with that tie that will never be erased from wrestling fans' oh. brains as well. The, you know, chasing off the announcers, ripping up the ring apron, showing underneath. Like, this was not just a normal, and the, plus it went quiet. There was mm -hmm. no commentary like, oh, my God, this is crazy. What's happening? There was none yeah. of that. It was silence of just beat down after beat down after beat down. And I think that's where really people connect with it more because you brought it up recycling the same old same old if you watch enough wrestling you've seen the same stories mm -hmm. but when you see something new you're like, oh i've watched right. wrestling for like 20 something years but this this is completely different so being part of this experience obviously people as myself and others will forever ask you you know what was the reception when you came backstage was people people like oh my god you did exactly what i wanted you to do yeah, like the first the first couple of days was just like, yeah, whatever, you guys did what you were told, right? And we were kind of still the new people, the new rookies. But, you know, there are some some guys backstage, like some of the seamstress ladies who've been there for 30 years. And like there's some, some of the backstage guys that have been working there for 30, 35, 40 years. And a lot of them sleep while the show is on because, you know, they're busy during the day and the day after. And, they yeah. you know, they tra travel with the, with the circus, <laughs> with the set or whatever. But when those guys... They were staying up to watch our segments and they were like, wow, I've been here for 30 years. This is so cool. This is so new. That's when it like clicked. I was like, wow, this is really so cool. Cause there weren't, there wasn't anything we can go back and reference to how are you going to play this out? We were just like freestyling it. So it was like, uh, I mean, it should have been way longer. I mean, it, we didn't even have a WrestleMania moment. It was like a nine month run. So that's kind of cool that you say it's going to definitely make the top 10 or top 20 oh yeah, moments, you know, and it wasn't even like a year run, which is in, in, insane if you think about it. Right, every pay-per-view and every, I guess even Raw, you know, attacking Vince McMahon, attacking The Rock, attacking John Cena, like there's a list of people that usually are untouchable, but you're destroying them, and every pay-per-view usually you're like, oh, it's the main event, I can't wait. But the next would show up and kind of just disrupt the match. No one was upset, no one was like, how dare they, I am angry. It was like, oh, thank oh, God, oh, they were, thank God they're they here. Were, they were upset like in, in, in the arenas. Like that was the craziest. Like whenever we came in and the lights were out, like people started like rumbling. Look, I'm getting goosebumps. It was it was it was cool Love moments. It. it really was. Like it was so different, you know, like being in the ring with Cena and Taker and like all those guys, you know, there's extra, extra atmosphere in there. So we got we got a lot of heat. <laughs> yes, yes. And then you did bring it up where you know we we'll, won't get to the bad part yet. You took on John Cena in a one-on-one -on -one match. And again, this at the time, John Cena is. Kind of, it feels like he's picking and choosing what he wants to do. Where he, and he always said in interviews he didn't do that. I don't buy that. I buy Vince McMahon. Hey, John, what do you think about this? John could easily go. Nah, I don't want to do that. And okay, let's go think of something else. But he, 
someone must have suggested, hey, why don't you fight Justin Gabriel? And they're like, okay, it was a great match. Again, what's that experience like knowing you're not fighting a wrestler? You're fighting the golden goose of the WWE at the time. Oh, yeah, and, and it just gave me so much more respect for him. You know, like, uh, he's, he's a genius. Say what you want. I never liked him growing up as a character, but, like, being in the ring with him, he's a genius. He's, like, he's next level. There's not many people that can hang with him. And, you know, that that's the one match you saw on TV, but, like, we did about 20, 30 matches on live events that was right. never aired. So it was kind of cool that that whole experience and progression, like being super nervous the first day, not not, wanting, not knowing what to do or what to say. And then just from there, just going crazy, doing all my stuff. He's like, man, I know you can do some stuff. Just do it. You know, at that time, no one wanted to do anything because he was John Cena. Right. Yes. So, uh, I mean, I bet, but looking back, we should have done so much more. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And then you did kind of bring it up and we're going to hit, hit it home right now. The Nexus, great run, Unstoppable Forces. You head into SummerSlam that year. It's like, and at first, and if people want to erase history, because I know certain people erase history, I'm going to bring up the real history. It's Nexus, and it's actually the team is called John Cena's All-Stars. That's <laughs> what the original team is called, John Cena's All-Stars. Was okay. it the WWE All Stars? It changed. It oh, changed wow. like a day later because everyone was like, "I don't think it's All Stars. What's this?" And Mandela effect. And eventually, <laughs> you have Edge and Jericho join the the John Cena's All Stars, and then you had other people join up, and and Bret Hart and and Daniel Bryan. It it was like the Island of Misfit Toys formed a tag <laughs> team, a faction to take down the Nexus, and mm. I know. Edge and Jericho on podcast have both said very loud and proud that they were pitching for the Nexus to beat the WWE All-Stars. Mm -hmm. John Cena is the one who said, eh, I don't want to do that. Let's have my team win. And that is the beginning of the end for the Nexus. Now, what are you aware of going into this match? Are you aware that John Cena said, I don't want to lose? I, I did not. I did not in the, in the beginning of the match. Um... If I was in Wade's position, I probably would have like stood up and said something at the time, but like I didn't know that it was gonna go that way. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you felt like you didn't have a voice. I yeah, but I mean, I I feel like if if I if I was in Wade's position, I would have said something because then I would have known what was about to happen. Like, see, we were kind of like kept in the dark. We didn't know that was the finish. I mean, we just assumed that we we're going over. Right. I mean, you... we're so good. Like, we were fucking the Nexus. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you were. A lot of Nexus yeah. shirts in the crowd. Awesome theme song as well. A badass group. Uh, it felt like just, I don't know, kicked in the groin that night. It really felt like it. And, and, no, then, from, no. and then from that point on, it just felt like this weird, bumpy ride. Oh, we're doing well, but we're not doing well. Oh, we're doing well, we're not doing well. What are, your, what's your, what are you feeling? Because in the beginning, you're obviously like, I'm just happy to be here. And then eventually you get to a point probably where you're like, okay, what has happened? Like, yeah, what, yeah. What did, we, what did we do wrong? It, like, it's like the momentum just stopped, you know. So, uh, you know, I mean, we took all of us kind of like took a different route in, in storylines, you know. That we they they broke it up and they didn't really know where they were gonna go. And I don't know, maybe 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 we were at fault there too. We should have like be more stern and be like, yo, this is the way we got some ideas. This is the way we're going. We were kind of just waiting for orders every week from from the big guy, you know. Yeah, we because have, we should have got to talk to him directly. Usually, you hear stories of wrestlers in the past, and it's usually a test. Sometimes it's a test by Vince McMahon mm. to see if you'll stand up for yourself or not. And that, yeah. and but at the same time, he's your boss. Well, if your mm. boss tells you something to do, the in, in the mindset, same for me. I have a boss. Same mindset would be, whatever you need. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. then you, if you push back, they might be like, "Oh, really? You're you're hard to work with." You were hard yeah. to work with, and then suddenly you're it's even worse off for you than what's happening to you at the point. Exactly. And then that can go both ways. So that's always a hard decision to make, right? Because you'd be like, it's, it's, a, it's a timing thing. Because it's not only in wrestling, it's also in life. You know, like if, if I made that decision to take that job, it would have turned out this way, maybe this way. It's like it's like it's like one of those timing things that it's like you 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 can never be wrong, but you can never be completely right. Right. It's, a, it's unfortunate what happened to the Nexus. And then eventually, yeah. again, they split off and CM Punk somehow became the leader of uh, the new Nexus. And when you put new in front of anything in wrestling, it usually <laughs> smells like a turd. It, uh, <laughs> it, there's a history. There's a giant yeah. history of putting new in front of things. It doesn't work out usually 99% of the time. But then you eventually left that group and informed the core. <laughs> 
with Wade Barrett, Ezekiel Jackson, you in, uh, I believe he Slater was in the group as well. And again, mm. the core, I think, had potential on SmackDown as its own faction. But yet it just again, it felt like there was this like, we want to do something, but we don't know what to do. We, we You were tag team champions, you and Heath. And then eventually it just Wade was IC champion and then they broke it off. You had a WrestleMania match as the core and lost in what, like. A ridiculous time. Uh, well, it felt like 10 seconds to me. Yeah, under a minute for sure. Under a minute. So the Nexus doesn't get a WrestleMania match. But the core gets a WrestleMania match. And you lose yeah. in like 15, 20 seconds. It, it, it's mind-boggling to me sometimes to look at things from a perspective of an outsider versus you're in the trenches. I, I want to know what are your, your, your WrestleMania. So this is great. Feel, you, must be, you may have to get in a big payday. But I guess you're not getting paid by the minute, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was still cool for me because uh, we were tag champs, and it was the first time my mom ever seen me live. She came, oh, good. She, she's never been on a plane. She came, flew over to uh, the U.S. from South Africa on a 16-hour plane ride. She's like, never again, by the way. But she, <laughs> she got to see me wrestle for the first time ever at WrestleMania for like 10 seconds. <laughs> wow.